Hi everybody, Adam Steele here for Pro Mix Academy, and today's video is going to be one that seems simple but can get pretty deep pretty quick, and that is how to record ARM in Reaper, and when you should and when you shouldn't do that. There are some really deep kind of things you can do with monitoring, uh, recording the output of uh, plugins, latency compensation, all that kind of stuff, as well as some neat little tips and tricks to make your life easier with things going faster. If this sounds interesting to you, check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide, which is a course that I've helped to produce on the ProMix Academy. That takes you start to finish right the way through a Reaper course. Everything that you need for recording yourself, recording bands, MIDI, audio, full instruments, virtual instruments, the works. Check it out. Okay, so record arming. It sounds kind of simple. And so let's go with the absolute basics first. Let's make ourselves a new track in Reaper. And there's a little red button on that track. Let's just call this track new. And if I click on that button, I have now armed that track for recording. Now that sounds like, oh, that's it, end of video. But no, there's so much more to that because first let's talk about what record arming means. Arming record on a track is like loading a gun or, you know, preparing to go. If I go back to somewhere in the middle of this song and I hit play, that track is not recording because we've not hit the record button, which is actually over here, which is the big red button. What we've done is we've said this track that we've made get ready to record when and only when the record main button is pressed. Now, beyond that, what we've actually told it to do is a lot more stuff. And so we've specifically said, get ready to record with the input, which is this one, analog one, and record the input of what comes in on that channel, which is something you can change. So firstly, where it now says analog one, that's now magically appeared over here. That is defining what the input is. If I click on this, we get a choice of either no input at all, which is something you can do, which is a little strange, but you can actually do that. You can arm recording with no input, which is a little weird, but yeah. Uh, you can have a mono input from any of your audio channels that your audio interface has. You can have stereo input from any stereo pair. Or you can have a MIDI input because, of course, in Reaper, it doesn't care if your channel is an audio channel, MIDI channel, anything like that. It just will record down whatever you want it to. So I've got one MIDI device connected right now. I could connect that instead or I can go back to audio mono. So if I was to choose, let's say analog seven on my interface, which happens to have a DI box connected. So if I now tap on the guitar jack, you'll see the levels moving. And that would, if I hit record, record the clean DI of that. So let's just hit record and just test that out. And so if I, do that, you'll see a little bit of audio come out there. The other options that you can do, this is where it gets a little bit clever. Over the record arming button that you saw me press over on the mixer, there is a duplicate of the record arm button up on the left here on the left side of the track because of course the tracks on the, the top half of my screen here and the mixer on the bottom half of my screen are exactly the same audio channels, just duplicated in two different visual styles. So if I right click on one of these record arm buttons, I can change loads of things about this. So what we can use this for with record arming is we can change the record method. Of course, this is currently set to record input, audio or MIDI, but if we were recording a MIDI channel, we can change that to overdub MIDI into the same thing. Or one of my favorite things is record output. So we can record the output, whether it's stereo, mono, or even multi-channel. So if you're working with, say, 
5.1 or Atmos or anything, we can record the output. And the difference there is, let's say I record output stereo, and I'll just quickly talk about the options because we can go post fader, post effects, or pre effects. What I might actually want here is post effects, but pre fader, so I can change the amount that I hear off this. And I'm going to change that also to record output stereo. And so what happens now is if I hit record on this, firstly, if I just tap on this, apart from it now being a stereo file that's made, everything else will look exactly the same. However, if I add some sort of processing, let's say I put Amplitube on here. So now I've got Amplitube with a fairly, you know, high gain guitar amp, very different sound. And let's say, I don't know, a big stereo kind of thing, like a stereo chorus or something. I don't know. What do we have? Nice big stereo guitar sound. Now, if I hit record, we can see on here, down here next to the record arm button, it actually says out. If I hit the big record button, I hit... That now looks way louder and is distorted because that has recorded down what this plugin or chain of plugins was doing. The other way that you can use this is you can use this as a kind of a print internally inside Reaper, much like you can do with things like Pro Tools. If I was to send my master output back to this channel, that would cause a horrible feedback loop. But Let's say I sent my drums to here, bass to here, and a few other things to here. Because I set that setting to uh, record output stereo post effects, I can turn that fader down so we don't hear it. And I can now hit record in the middle of the song. And that's recording those instruments that I sent over there as a kind of a stereo print. So I can do that at any point. So as an internal routing thing in Reaper. Now, if I undo those so we don't get some feedback loops. The other thing is that there's monitoring on everything in Reaper, this little speaker icon next to the record arm. So I can turn that off so that I don't hear the uh, the guitar amp going. Because of course, this being set to record output, that's not gonna do much. If I change the record back to input, I can also force the format to mono or stereo or multi-channel or MIDI. So sometimes like if I'm doing this kind of send thing, um, I might have some MIDI on there that I want to record and only that or force stereo, force mono, and that won't then bake in the MIDI. So I could say force stereo, the input, and we're not hearing that, but you can see the meter go, which could be really useful for tracking things where you've got direct monitoring going on. So if you've got direct monitoring through, say, in my case, I've got the, in my case, I've got, say, the Audient Evo mixer here. So I'm seeing a couple of things come up. I could have live monitoring on that with, zero latency and still record it into Reaper without having to hear a double of it. And if I needed to force the format for some unknown reason, I don't know why you would force stereo, but maybe you would force mono if you've got a stereo input and you're trying to mix it down at the same time. Who knows? There are so many reasons you might use things like this. And so the fact that you can do this versatility makes Reaper really, really powerful. Hope you found this really useful. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.